YouTube, PD Two Finger here. The deal with the camcorder is done. We got a kick-ass camcorder, fits my whole bill of lading, all the crazy uh, list of demands that I had for this camera that I was looking for. Uh, checked them all off with this particular unit. It's got a remote control, shoots 60 frames per second in 1280 by 1080 P, not interlaced, so it's full HD, external mic, I can adjust the levels on the mic. Um, it I runs off an external battery pack. It's got a remote. Uh, just like I was tripping out about where the mic jack is because a lot of them you'll open up the door and on the inside, right in the front, they put the mic jack. Like I don't want the mic jack there. Put it on the other side where there's nothing going on. So it's awesome. Like where you put the card in is on the bottom, so you can pull the card out while it's on the tripod. And we got a new tripod that, uh, it's a aluminum one, and it has a quick release panel. So you screw that panel in once, and it latches in to the camera. And then when you want to remove the camera, you put your hand on the top of the camera, pull the latch, and the whole thing just comes out. So it's no more than screwing it in every time, where you're going to drop it. So for the mic, uh, I found this tripod. It was $4.399 at Goodwill, marked down half price, because it was missing the quick release dock and I had one of those docks at home and it worked out perfect it fit so we bought it for two bucks because it was an older unit which means the newer ones are kind of flimsy and this is like it's a medium sized tripod I mean we've got a bunch of tripods here we've got a real skinny flimsy one we've got a German one made out of aluminum from the 40s that's beautiful but even though I took it apart cleaned it and lubed it uh, it's still difficult with the uh, on it, when you tighten it when you put it away. It just it's a hassle. It's a hassle. It's a wonderful looking and it feels great, but like my wife has a hard time doing it. This one has latches and they're heavy duty. They're not the ones that break. They they pop open and you pull the leg out and it's got the thing where you spin it and the neck comes up, and it has the uh, the bar where you go up and down, and also a thing that goes left and right. So what I did was on the one thing, you can unscrew it, it comes out. So it's like a big plastic uh, thumb screw with a threaded bolt. I put a couple of washers in there and ran a piece of plumber's tape, which is like a strip of tin that has holes drilled out of it. So that will come in the front of the camera and then 90 over. And then I have another one uh, that bolts onto that. So it's this contraption thing coming off of it, a bracket. And what you do, you drop the, the uh, it's a shotgun microphone, it's like this big, and it has a base with a threaded hole. So you put put that on that metal tape and then run a thumb screw in to secure it. And then when you remove it, you just pull that off of there, pick the mic up, and then reattach the thumb screw to the mic and throw it in the bag. Unplug it from the camera, throw it in the bag. So the idea with that was, I mean, I could have just ran it like the tape the metal tape comes off the camera and then we just screw it in like this and the mic is sitting that way well it's a stereo mic so then the elements of the mic would be uh, up and down and I wanted to mount them so they were right and left because it has like a 90 degree and 120 degree uh, polar pattern so if you're interviewing somebody close up you put it on 90 for a wider stereo spread you hit that 120 switch. And it has a little tiny lithium ion barrel battery. You can recharge a three volt battery. So that mic was nine bucks. Now, the story with this was, I wasn't hot on this model at first because I was confused about the CMOS sensors. This model has a half inch professional, like what they use in the pro line. And the CMOS sensor is the eye that the light comes through and gets converted to digital. So that's the thing, like the cheap Vivitar cameras, they say they're HD while the reason the picture looks like crap, uh, and especially if you try to shoot indoors with that, they look terrible. You take it out of the sunshine, it's not too bad, but it doesn't really look HD. That's because the, the CMOS, the actual eye, is junky. It's a little tiny one, small, cheaply made, cheap to produce, cheap price tag. And then, of course, it shoots, it renders the file in HD. So they say, it's an HD camcorder, what do you want? Well, yeah, it's HD, but the actual element, the eye that's seeing everything... It's not really HD quality. So the JVC Averio that we had, that we were shooting everything on for years when we made music, 
is a uh, one fifth of an inch uh, CMOS. What we have is a half inch, so it's quite an improvement. Uh, like I said, I was looking to shoot 1280 by 1080, 60 frames per second. P, not interlaced. I needed a remote because we're taking our guitars off, running over to the camera, hitting pause and play. Took the fun out of it. So, uh, I didn't like the C-shaped proprietary power plug that the newer models have. I like the barrel shape of the older ones. But the older cameras, I mean, all of them, they shoot the same specs. Like, they're all, like, about the same HD, pretty much. Uh, but some of the older ones were, like, 8 megapixel, where the newer ones were 3. So I was like, what's up with that? And also, they're real small. The newer cameras are like, beep boop, I'm a little guy. I'm like, that seems breakable compared to, like, a, huh, like a big Johnson, like, here it is, camera, you know, like a Coke can. So, that's what we ended up with. I couldn't be happier. I had went through this process of trying to win auctions on uh, eBay and a Goodwill auction site to get a mixer, and everyone was just slapping them down, 100s, 200s. And I'm like, the thing is 120 new. You know, calm down, guys. You should only be paying 50 bucks for this thing if it's a used battery-powered mixer. So we got our mixer for 35 finally, 15 shipping. It was $50. It was a $100 brand-new mixer. It runs off 12 volts, 1 amp, so I was able to you know, use triple... 3 by 18650 cell pack. Um, so that's like 12 volts times 3 for more milliamps to keep it running. Also can run it on a sealed lead acid battery. But this was just a long process of me trying, to, uh, losing all these auctions. Losing, losing, losing. And I'm terrible about gambling. Like I've never gambled. I've never played a lottery ticket. Uh, I'm too much of a worry wart. So these auctions, I would see something. It would be like four days away. And I'd be all waking up early like, check it. Is it still there? And like, jonesing and then you know i would be like two dollars more and they would put like thirty dollars more like people that have money they're just like huh, you know boom 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 put it on my visa enter i want it and i was just like gonna puke <laughs> so the same thing happened uh with the camcorders only worse people know about these vixias and again, if you want to buy a camcorder, get the Canon Vixia. It's awesome. They all have the mic jack and the headphone jack. So you can check what you've done. You record, you want to make sure. You, you, you can set the attenuation level of the mic. It's really cool. It's so They're so cool. They're just beautiful cameras. And uh, you can get them for cheap. A lot of times people will bring them in, uh, sell them as is because they don't have the charger and the battery's dead. But I ran into... I what. After losing a bunch of auctions, I had a uh, sniper software, and I changed the thing, changed the amount, and it did the little thing with the hourglass spins around, and bing, the auction's over. And I, I was $2 over the guy who did the highest bid, but when I changed the price by a couple of bucks, it took a minute. It lagged, and he beat me. So I lost uh, multiple auctions on cameras, and I was bumming about that. Because they were all going away. It was like there was no more. It was like, when, when's, when is some more going to come up, you know? And so I, I got on this shopgoodwill.com auction, and I won. And it was supposed to be a 500 camera, a 5 series. And I was all excited. And I bought the cape, power cable, the remote, a memory card, a microphone, windscreen for the mic, getting all the stuff. I got a camera bag. It was all like, you know... I'm getting a great deal on everything, and a lot, a lot of it I'm getting from Goodwill. Like the camera bag was like a dollar, you know. So the camera comes, and it's not a five series; it's a one series. So I was pissed. It took forever to get the money back on that. It was just like everything that could go wrong, and then like we couldn't find the Dropbox was there on Google, and it wasn't there in real life. We went to another draw, looked on the Garmin and found it. We pull up, and here's the FedEx guy leaving. Bye. See you tomorrow. And I'm like, we need the money back. Like, we've been broke. We don't have any money for food or gas. Because I got screwed on these camera deals. So, finally, it went out. It was like, oh, Labor Day weekend. Sorry. So then it sat for another day. Another day, because of the FedEx driver driving by. Two days, because we couldn't pay print the label then it got out there it got in the state and it just sat 
It was like, we're going to deliver it today, and it's like the next day. We're going to deliver it tomorrow, the next day. We're going to deliver it tomorrow. Then finally they drop it off on Friday at the end of the day. They didn't say anything on Monday, and I'm freaking out. So today, finally, they sent me my money back. I bought another camera through Big Al's Trading Post. They said it's a perfect camera. Nothing wrong with it. It's the battery's dead, and we don't have a tester to charge it, so we don't know. They sold it to me for a deal. The guy I talked to him on the phone, he was real nice. And I get it. There's five missing screws on the bottom. The bottom's hanging on by one screw that's halfway in. I open the thing up. There's two screws hanging out of the side panel. I'm like, oh, my God, there's no way this thing works. Somebody's opened it up because it's, it's malfunctioning. And sure enough, it didn't work. So all of this unbelievable hassle jumping through hoops and me freaking out, being all nervous, finally... We had to send the camera in to Canon because it was older. The Canon, the, ca the camera we got is a half-inch CMOS sensor. The, the camera we had is one-fifth of an inch CMOS sensor. So this is quite an improvement, and it has to do with uh, low light. Like, we film outdoors. It's a long day. It takes a lot to get out there, packing up the stuff, bringing it out to the car, packing it up. Drive over there, unpack it, 200 yards to the spot. Pack it all out, set it up, test it, set the camera up, play a couple of songs, get do the sound check, take a drink break, have some pizza, then start filming. And before you know it, it's lunch break, and then the sun's going down. And when the sun starts going down with that one-fifth of an inch CMOS sensor, all the footage is garbage. So I got wise after a couple of years, and now when the sun starts going down, we just pack up. Because I know, well, we could play, but it's not. It's just ridiculous to try to film it. Because unless the sun is like burning bright, it, the footage looks terrible. Well, that's not the case with the half-inch CMOS sensor. This is a professional camera, prosumer they call it. It's not consumer. It's got features of the pro camera, but it's still kind of in a consumer shell. So, man, I got so lucky we got one of these kick-ass cameras and it works. The only thing was, it didn't like the new memory cards. The new memory cards have a 10 for the rating, for the speed. They transfer the data. And the 10 is good. It's cranking the data back and forth. You know, it'll take a lot in and give a lot out real fast. Uh, this camera is like, what's that? Because it's a, a newer card. And it would only work with a like a 6. And the 6 is only go up to 32 gig. Now, I ordered a 64 gig rated 10 card a SanDisk or some name brand. So it turns out it was like that was one of the reasons I had against this camera was you had to mail it to Canon and they would do a firmware update for you and you would have to pay the shipping which is like I don't know is there insurance you have to sign for it it sounds like it's like a $30 shipping it's like Virginia or California one or the other I'm like eh, it's gonna it's almost as much as what I want to pay for the camera you know, because I paid 19 bucks for our first camera. All that footage that you see when we're jamming, that's a $19 JVC Averio HD camera. I just shoot them the next thing down because we only had a crappy 32 gig memory card, which was dumb. I should have upgraded that card years ago. They're not that expensive. And then I could have shoot, shot at a higher rating. It would have just been bigger file sizes. Anyway, that's that whole nightmare story. Uh, when I ended up actually mailing it over to Canon they didn't charge us so really we paid like 30 for a camera that's worth $1,100 now I ordered originally that first auction they said here's a 500 series 5 series and that's what we got uh, from Big Al's trading post that was wrecked the 5 series but I had ordered the C-shaped power cable the remote and the microphone, the memory card, and this furry windscreen for the mic. Then I bought the camera bag and the tripod uh, and put together a voltage box and the cable. So it turns out that first C-shaped cable, it's, it's not compatible. It's, it's for the 5 Series, and that's not what we have. We don't have that camera anymore. So... That's four bucks that I'm taking it in the rear. And then I bought the remote, which is a WL89. And I'm not sure. It might work with this camera, but I think it won't. I think the older remote will work on the newer camera, but I think the newer remote won't work on the older camera. So I'm going to have to buy a remote that's 13 bucks, and I'm going to take that 7 bucks in the rear. Unless I turn around and try to sell it. It's a $4 cable and a $7 remote. If I can maybe package those up. 
for 10 and put them on eBay, maybe get that money back. But either way, it's like, you know, learn from my mistake. Get a get a uh, Canon Vixia and get a 300. They, that's the last model that has the uh, remote. Now they have different like HFM, HFR, so the, you really got to read up on what you're getting and what's out there. But these are awesome camcorders. They they all shoot in like really great HD, and they have the kick-ass CMOS sensor. Some of them are way bigger than the others. So certain model numbers are the ones you really want to look out for. They're really expensive. Uh, they have so the older ones have hardware remotes. The newer ones work through your phone, but some of them you have to get a special remote attachment that pops into the shoe, which it's a mini shoe. You have to get a mini to a large shoe adapter to fit the mic or a normal light, and that's twenty bucks. I didn't want to spend that, so I just made a bracket attached to our aluminum tripod, which will work fine. But uh, it, like I would recommend if you want a hard, if if you don't care about the remote, any one of the Averio or any one of the Vixias is going to be great for you. If you want a remote and you want a heart, like a hardware remote, a dedicated thing, you have to get a 300 or a 200 or a 100. And some of those old ones, man, they're really big CMOS sensors. They're like 8 megapixels and shit. And well, the new ones are like 3. So it's kind of a trade-off. You get the smaller one, if that's what you want. It's still going to be a great picture, but it's not going to be the 8 megapixel. It's not going to have that low light performance, you know. Maybe you could see the screen through your phone. That would be really cool for you if you want to run it off your phone. I don't have a smartphone, so this is just my thing. The most important thing was having the external mic jack, you know, and the headphone jack for me to be able to check our mixes while we're there. So it's really cool that this worked out. I couldn't be happier. We didn't pay a real lot. There's that $11 that's kind of in the limbo, and then, I'm, of course, I've got to order a remote. But uh, check it out. Our stuff's going to improve. And thank you to DW for commenting and letting me know you could do it. Because it turned out I can. I got it going. It's it's happening. It's going to come together. And we're going to be shooting some footage tomorrow on it. Hopefully we're getting the camera back. So you can check that out tomorrow. But uh, I'm going to let you guys go. That's the saga of the camcorder. It's all good. See you soon in full HD with a remote. And an external microphone. And an aluminum tripod with a quick release. <laughs> Alright, you guys. Peace.